is our school. It might look like any other school, but it has a secret. It's a passive house. A what? Passive house. But this isn't a house. No. Yeah! And it's not very passive either. I think we might need to explain. Come with us. This is one of the architects of our school. A passive house is really just a building that has been built better. While many buildings are drafty and inefficient, a passive house not only uses less energy, it doesn't waste energy. And that means it saves the environment, it saves money, and it's actually more comfortable to be in. And at a time when climate change is a growing problem, building to passive house standards will reduce CO2 emissions, and clearly that's a good thing. You're probably wondering how it all works. We'll show you. Both of these keep your coffee warm, but there's a difference. Here, the energy is continually put in. The heat goes in and the heat escapes. So more heat goes in, but the heat just escapes and so on. The heat leaks from the top, the soils and even all around the bottom. But the thermos is built differently. It is so well insulated, you just heat the water once, pour the hot coffee in, screw the lid on and it stays warm for hours. So a bit like that, our school has been made so that it is very well insulated and extremely airtight. But if it's airtight, how do we breathe? We know someone who can tell you. By airtight we mean that no air is leaking out or getting in where it shouldn't be, which is essentially the case with all other types of buildings. But we do have a mechanical ventilation system and this allows fresh air into the building and then allows it to circulate efficiently. and insulated like a normal building. Our school is actually super insulated with around 300 millimetres of warm cell. That's recycled newspaper. It's like a nice cosy duvet around the building. The floor, the roof, the walls, the windows and the doors, they are all designed so no heat can escape unless we want it to. So what's putting the heat into the school? Well, a lot of it comes from us. We're heating the air and that with the insulation and air control means we all need a little boiler to heat this whole school. The school is also oriented and designed carefully. It makes use of free heat from the sun in the winter months when the sun is low, but it also stops the sun getting in in the summer months when the sun is high. The air is much refresher too because of the MVHR. I'm sorry? Mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. That's what we were talking about earlier. It lets the fresh air in and the stale air out without losing the heat. <laughs> and fresher air means fresher minds. We all work better when there's less CO2 in the air. <laughs> Operating this building is as easy as one, two, three. You shouldn't really need to touch anything apart from the windows and the thermostat. And even then, not very often. Let's start with the winter. Each classroom has windows and ventilation panels. Windows can generally stay closed in the winter as enough fresh air is supplied mechanically. And by keeping the windows closed, we save on energy for heating. This doesn't mean you can't open windows. You just shouldn't need to do it often. So if it gets too hot, adjust the thermostat first. And if you find you're adjusting things regularly, then contact the facilities manager. So when it is child's play. Told you, next summer. When it gets too hot, you can open windows and ventilation panels. So cooler air is entering through these, while fresh air is still being supplied mechanically to the classrooms through the ventilation grills. Also, in summer, you can turn the lights in the room off, open the blinds and make the most of the daylight. Which reminds me... So, our building's doing its best to save us energy, but we need to do our bit too. Always think, should it be on? And if not, turn it off. 
things like lights, projectors, screens and computers. They always tell you if not being used. We're proud of our school. I can see why. 